part, this is a science film. In part, this is a proposal from me to you for dramatically changing the world. Mostly, this is all extremely interesting. It explains truly life-changing breakthroughs in physics. And a special topic that deals with water, droughts, famine, and the planet's environment. Altogether, this film covers three main topics. The solution to the question, what is time? The grand unification of physics and the solution to fusion energy. In my opinion, directly and indirectly, this new physics is going to dramatically change your life. One very interesting, very specific benefit of this new physics is it will enable us to collect massive amounts of fresh water in hot deserts. Obviously, a benefit like that would greatly help to eliminate droughts and famines. In essence, this new physics is very green. In my opinion, there are three reasonable strategies to transforming the Bodell Depression. I just mentioned the first, just grow a thin layer of desert grasses. Yes, some trees would grow out there on their own. However, I envision it looking something like this picture. The second trick is to do it indirectly. Just emphasize refilling Lake Chad to about 285 meters above sea level. In this image, Lake Chad has reached this level. Then, when this level is reached, the existing riverbed that is currently clogged with sand would be cleaned out. This old riverbed flows downhill between Lake Chad and the Bodell Depression. This image shows that riverbed with the water flowing north. After Lake Chad refills to about 285 meters, any additional filling of the Lake Chad would overflow and start flowing through this dried up riverbed again. The Bodell Depression would start refilling and one and would once again become Lake Bodell. This image shows the point where the Bodell has refilled about halfway. It would be extremely interesting to see the Bodell Depression refilling, reestablishing this ancient lake next to Lake Chad. Yes, it would take years, but there is no doubt using fusion energy and desert oasification atmospheric water generators, this is possible. Keep in mind, even if this blocked river was not opened up, when Lake Chad refills to about 289 meters, it will overflow into the Bodell all on its own. This could cause some flooding problems. It would be better to plan and control this flow. Someday Lake Chad and the Bodell depression could be refilled to about 289 meters above sea level. At this level, the Bodell depression would be about 139 meters deep. That would be amazing. The people of Lake Chad would be able to farm thousands of square miles around the new lake. And of course, the lake would probably have fish in it and be useful for fishing. At this level, the region would already be supporting an entire new ecosystem of African animals. I envision it looking something like this. Everything is green. During the rainy summer months, the rain clouds would naturally make it this far north from the Gulf of Guinea. And best of all, hundreds of thousands of square miles of new land would allow Africa's great animals to move in and set up a new home. At this point, if the water level of the two lakes rises to about 290 meters, then the two lakes will merge and will become a newer, larger Lake Chad. Take a moment and imagine what that might look like. Personally, I would like to see Lake Chad raise to 325 meters above sea level. Because this water level is possible, in my opinion, no new major town should be established in the Chad Basin below this level. All dologs and major construction projects should be located accordingly. In my opinion, this is the best level for Lake Chad. Lake Chad would once again have a surface area of about 325,000 square miles. The lake would contain over 16,000 cubic kilometers of water. Compare that to now. At this time, Lake Chad has less than about 72 cubic kilometers of water. Lake Chad would contain over 220 times as much water. After Lake Chad once again reaches this size, 
it would start flowing south again through the Banu Trough. Due to natural drainage, the lake can never get higher. It doesn't make sense to dam the gorge to the south other than to help control flooding. Lake Chad's waters would once again flow down the Banu River to the Niger River and then once again flow to the Gulf of Guinea and to the Atlantic Ocean. Back to the strategies for refilling the Bodell Depression. Their third trick to transforming the Bodell is to encircle it with a variety of green plants and then to work towards the center. In this graphic I've placed numbered circles to show you what I'm visualizing. The first location is perhaps the best place to start in a synergy with the Termit Mons. The second location helps the starving people of Niger in Nigeria. The third location helps the people of Cameroon. The fourth helps the people of Chad and the refugees from the Darfur conflict region. The fifth location would help extend how far the summer rains penetrate to the north as, as well as the sixth location. These two locations are in Niger. The seventh and eighth locations could be reversed and the order doesn't really matter that much. This is like a battle plan with a strategy to encircle the Bodell Depression. 9, 10, and 11 would complete the encircling maneuver. None of these locations are located below the 325 meter level above sea level. Lake Chad has existed for hundreds of thousands of years, probably for over 3 million years. It has had periods where it has grown into unbelievable sizes. It has endured dry periods lasting thousands of years. During that existence, tons of life has lived and died in this lake. The nutrients from this ancient life are still there in massive quantities. This massive Paleolithic lake basin could once again become fertile, become greened. It will just take a lot of water and a lot of work. It will take a lot of fusion energy. However, imagine the benefits for Africa. Perhaps it would be wiser to green the country of Sudan first. For most of the year, the prevailing winds blow over the Sahara from the northeast, from the direction of the Red Sea. Recall this graphic from earlier. This is Africa's wind patterns during the dry winter months. Notice how the winds blow from the northeast across the Red Sea. If the country of Sudan is greened first, then the atmosphere to the northeast of the Bodell Depression would be wetter. Then, instead, the prevailing winds would pull in hot, moist air into the area, rather than hot, dry air. Earlier, I showed this graphic. I mentioned how scientists have recently discovered an ancient, dried-up mega lake buried beneath the sands of northern Sudan. If this ancient lake has a name, I don't know what it is called. I also showed this graphic. This will give a little better idea of the political implications. I made this map before South Sudan broke away from Sudan and became the newest country. Anyhow, up here in the northwest Sudan, where this ancient mega lake was located, is a great desert location just waiting to be greened. I made a graphic of this area using the SRTM data. Let's look at a few of the key details here. First, humidity from the Red Sea blows into this area from the northeast. In general, this useful moisture is always close at hand for the Sudan. Think of Egypt and Sudan as having a giant solar evaporator on its eastern shore. Second, notice the Nile River flowing north. I've added some of its tributaries in the, in the south. Third, I've added the ancient dried up mega lake in the northwestern Sudan. I've also added ancient streams and riverbeds in this area. At this time, they are dried up. Some of these flow into this lake. One river flowed out of this lake. Notice how this river once drained downhill into the Nile. This graphic shows this area after the lake has been reestablished. Imagine the lake restocked with fish, rimmed by small fishing villages. Imagine the surrounding foothills, colored here with bright green are covered with new farmlands. 
If this area is greened and this ancient mega lake is reestablished, then it would provide wonderful benefits to the people in this region. Not far to the south is the Darfur region of Sudan. For many years now, this area has endured a terrible conflict. In general, the people in this area are killing each other over water. Remember, in these topographical graphics that use the SRTM data, color is a measure of height. Green is high, red is low. The green in this graphic does not represent vegetation. This graphic makes it easy to think this area is wet, lush, and green. At this time, it is just the opposite. However, if Sudan utilizes the humidity from the Red Sea using fusion power dogs, then the green in this graphic could tr become truly green, and the gold areas that I've colored could become great farmlands. In my opinion, this would be a great humanitarian project. However, personally, I find it a lot harder to envision helping this country with hundreds of millions of dollars of fusion power dogs when I think about the fighting that has been going on. I would like to help this region. It will be a key to the greening of the Sahara. The people of this country have been killing each other because of how the Sahara region is getting drier. It's too bad that because the people in this area are killing each other, it makes the greening of the Sahara region even more difficult. Personally, over the next 20 years, I would love to see the entire swath of the Sahara greened. However, I understand there are many religious and political implications. If a country has hatred for the United States, then how can we help them to this extent? Or from a different point of view, the countries that would be helped first would likely be the ones that are friendly to the United States. Critically, with this method of producing water, there is no dry season neither is there a rainy season. With this method, a stream of water is produced consistently 24 hours per day, every day, every month. 